Okay, so again, I'm going to discuss another session on the uh, CYU 4303 Unit 3, uh, which is the session four, uh, chemistry of carboxylic acids and their derivatives. And so here's the, uh, you know, here are the content uh, of the session four. We'll go over these, uh, you know, each, uh, each title separately. So what are these carboxylic acids? So carboxylic acids are weak acids, as we all know. So these are not really new uh, concepts to you because you have learned about this uh, definitely at your level three as well. So the carboxylic acids are compounds with this functional group carboxyl. So that is the main thing. So you have to have this uh, functional group carboxyl uh, for a compound to uh, be a carboxylic acid. And then you have this aliphatic part attached to this carboxylic or the carboxyl functional group. And so here are some examples uh, like, uh, you know, this, the N uh, here could be uh, from zero, one to, you know, or, or you know, to, um, could get any number, you know, depending on the carbon chain here. So then the simplest carboxylic acid is the methanoic acid, where this N equals zero. So no substituent on the carbon. And that is methanoic acid. Then you have ethanoic acid or acetic acid, as we all know. And the propanoic, betanoic, pentanoic, hexanoic. So you have, uh, I mean, those are some of the examples of a common uh, carboxylic acids with carboxyl functional group. So if you get, uh, if you pay attention to the uh, physical properties of these carboxylic acids, you know, many of them are colorless liquids. And so depending on the, the substituent on the carboxyl uh, carbonyl group, the carbon chain, uh, you know, when you increase the number of carbons, so then uh, these become actually wax-like solids. Uh, only these simple molecules like, you know, ethanoic acid or ethanoic, so they are like water soluble and, you know, they remain as uh, liquids. So, as I said, you know, the simple molecules, they are very soluble in water uh, because they have this, uh, they have, they can make uh, hydrogen bonds. So this hydrogen uh, can make hydrogen bonds with water. Uh, the hydrogen on the carboxyl functional group can make hydrogen bonds with water. So that's a, that's a variable interaction, and uh, so they hence most of uh, sorry the simple uh, carboxylic acids are uh, soluble due to this strong interaction with water. Uh, but the solubility goes down when you increase the number of carbons. Like when you increase this part, this part if you increase that, uh, the uh, and you increase this part, uh, this is not really helping. Uh, so the solubility uh, decreases because that part is hydrophobic <clears throat> and that part uh, uh, does not interact favorably with water. So therefore, if you increase the, uh, the carbon chain length, actually the solubility goes down. And these have high boiling point because of this uh, hydrogen bonding. So the strong intermolecular interactions will increase the boiling point because we know that uh, boiling is when a liquid is uh, uh, liquid molecules uh, go into the vapor phase. So to uh, for them to get uh, you know that freedom to go from the liquid to the vapor phase, they need to break the intermolecular forces. So then if you have strong intermolecular forces, you're going to need a lot of energy or a lot of heat supplied to that liquid to go into the vapor phase. And these have, you know, sharp, unpleasant smell. The carboxylic acids, if you remember, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you have used uh, acetic acid or glacial acetic acid. So, you know, they smell pretty nasty. Uh, they have really unpleasant smell. And... Uh, the, the other important thing is, you know, in the next session, we'll talk about these in detail, you know, carboxylic acid derivatives. So this is the parent carboxylic acid. So where you have this carboxyl functional group, 
And then this OH can be replaced with other uh, elements or functional groups like halides, like chlorine bromine, then it is called an acid halide. And then you can have, you know, this uh, functional group, I have like an ester <clears throat> group and, you know, replaces the hydroxyl. So then these are called acid anhydride. Then you have esters or alkyl group. Then you have amide where you have this OH is replaced by NH2. Then you have thioesters. Whenever you have sulfur, uh, you, you get this name thio. So now we have thioesters. Then acyl phosphates, the... Uh, it's like an ester, like a phosphor, uh, phosphor ester. So you have this uh, group that, uh, that's a phosphate, like in phosphoric acid. Uh, so then those are called acyl phosphates. So make sure that you're familiar with these different uh, carboxylic derivatives. You know, when you see these structures, you should know what they are. And more examples, uh, the same, you know, uh, same derivatives of carboxylic acid some examples for you to refer uh, here you know we categorize uh, nitriles also among carboxylic acids so that is the only carboxylic acid derivative without the carbonyl group but uh, these nitriles also considered as carboxylic acid derivatives okay so then uh, whenever we uh, learn about a new functional group or new type of compounds it's very important that we uh, know how to name them, the nomenclature. And uh, although you have learned about this nomenclature of organic molecules in your uh, level three, I just I just wanted to kind of refresh your memory on this uh, the naming uh, aspect of these compounds. So uh, these carboxylic acids, you know, we know if you remember that uh, when you uh, consider the priority of these functional groups, carboxylic acids gets the highest priority. And so what we do is, you know, if you have a carboxyl functional group, we pick the longest chain that includes the carboxyl group. And then we use the suffix suffix for the, the, the which comes at the end of the name. Uh, so this is the suffix we're going to use, oic acid. So then, for example, like if you have pentane, so if you have pentane, uh, so then you, uh, you know, remove this E at the end of the, uh, the hydrocarbon or the saturated hydrocarbon with oic acid. So then your name will be pentanoic acid. You don't have to specify it's one pentanoic acid because uh, carboxyl always gets the number one. And so we don't have to uh, specify that. So, I mean, that is the the, the only difference uh, with respect to carboxylic acids, but all the other IUPAC nomenclature rules uh, will apply. So you'll see some examples uh, in a little bit. Uh, but so that is for the, you know, uh, you know, chain or the aliphatic compounds, you know, where you have uh, chains, but how about the carboxylic acids on a ring? So then you will have, a, you know, there's a little bit difference. Uh, so we, we have to use this carbox, the, the, the name, the carboxylic acid. So you have to kind of, uh, use that, for example, this one, uh, where you have the cyclo, uh, pentane ring attached to the. Uh, carboxyl group so this is the cyclopentane group so then you will say cyclopentane carboxylic acid so then you have to keep a space here then what if what if you have more substituents on those uh those rings so then you label them you kind of number the ring so that uh, the carboxyl group will get the uh the lowest number and here so then therefore uh, chlorine gets three and uh, this is this is wrong. So if you go from the other way around, chlorine will get four. You got to make sure this uh, you number. Like when you have two options, two ways to number, you have to make sure that uh, you get you give the lowest possible numbers for the substituents. So then this would be three chloro uh, cyclopentane carboxylic acids. So that's how you name uh, carboxylic acids on a ring. And what if you have more functional groups? Uh, you know, attached to this one. Well, <clears throat> no, carboxyl, carboxylic acids or, or compounds with carboxyl functional groups. Uh, still, as I said, you know, the carboxyl uh, functional group gets the highest priority and then the others uh, follow the carboxylic acid. Uh, so after the carboxylic acid, you get the other <clears throat> functional groups. So then you have, you know, you first go the 
a substituent, uh, you know, starting from the lowest priority, and you use the, the you know, correct uh, prefixes, and then you name the parent chain followed by the suffix. Uh, the, so that this is, you know, like the, the, the normal where we label, uh, or oh, sorry, uh, the name organic compounds. See some of the examples of uh, this uh, propanoic acid. So you have you have one, two, three. So therefore, it's pro, uh, you know propane. Uh, if it is you know just a hydrocarbon, but since you have the carboxylic groups, so it's a propanoic acid. And you have one, two, three, uh, methyl three, chloro uh, propanoate. So this is actually an ester. So that's the uh, carboxylic acid derivative. So you have methyl group here. Uh, which is, you know, that's how the ester is made. So that methyl is here. So you uh, give, you know, start from that uh, methyl 3, 3 chloro. So, so chlorine is attached to the third position of the chain, 3 chloro uh, propanoate. And also acid chlorides we have, that's also carboxylic acid derivative. So there, so this one is labeled, uh, named as propanoyl chloride. So then when you have acid halides, the suffix is oil halide. Now, the more examples are here, so you can uh, once I upload these uh, slides, you can you can study them on your own. So they are pretty straightforward. Then how do you you know then we have salts of carboxylic acid because we know these acids they react with bases and then you get uh, uh, like uh, uh, salts. So here, for example, if you if you have acetic acid, then you made sodium acetate. So then. They are labeled as esters, you know, named as esters. This one is, you know, you have to specify which metal you have, uh, you have made the salt with. So this example, sodium acetate. So see the suffix eight should be there. So that's how you uh, name the eight. So this is pentanoic acid. Then the salt of pentanoic acid will be, you know, with the potassium, for example, potassium pentanoid. Then benzoic acid. So that's, uh, you know, aromatic. Benzoic and uh, aromatic acid, aromatic carboxylic acid. So then this one, uh, you know, made a salt with lithium. So then this is lithium benzoate. Okay, so let's look at some of the physical properties of this carboxylic acid. As I mentioned before, uh, these carboxylic acids, they can actually make uh, hydrogen bonds uh, with, especially with water. Uh, and also they they exist as dimers in you know in this 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 form because of this you know the, the ability for them to make the hydrogen bonds. Uh, so this is the hydrogen bonding uh, with water, and uh, because of this hydrogen bonding, so they have high boiling point. Uh, so uh, as shown here, like acetic acid, it's about one hundred eighteen. Uh, one propanol, ninety seven. Uh, so. The, the thing is, you know, when you uh, increase this, increase this, uh, the carbon chain, see the, uh, the boiling point increases. The reason for that boiling point to increase, although you are not really increasing the uh, hydrogen bonding ability, what happens, you know, when you have carbon hydrogen, so you have something called, you have dispersion forces, dispersion, dispersion forces uh, among you know, in, uh, in between them. So in, in so that's a uh, weak intermolecular interaction, but when you increase the carbon chain, you increase this van der Waal forces or this dispersion forces. So therefore that also adds to the uh, the boiling point or the intermolecular interaction in addition to the hydrogen bonding. So therefore, if, when you increase the carbon chain, the boiling point increases due to the higher intermolecular interactions. Okay, so then uh, the acidity. So it's very important because these are acids, although they are weak acids, they're acids. And then uh, uh, these weak acids, uh, they undergo uh, this kind of uh, reaction uh, in water, especially like carboxylic acids. They're the water, the carboxylic acid will give a proton to water. And then this becomes its conjugate base. So now, uh, so simply this is, uh, now it has lost the proton. Now it is the uh, uh, the carboxylate anion, and then you make the hydroxon the hydronium hydronium ion. Like because water accepted a proton from the carboxylic acid. Now it has become the conjugate acid of the water, 
and this is the conjugate base of the acid. Then if you write the equilibrium uh, constant or the equilibrium, uh, yeah, the equilibrium constant, so it'll be, you know, it can be written as this, but we know water is in, you know, excess and it is the concentration is not really changing. Then if you multiply this, So then we can write Ka equals K equilibrium times concentration of water. And then that is this. And then, you know, uh, we can get the, you know, similar to pH and stuff, you know, pH. You can write pKa as minus log Ka. So that is the, you know, the standard uh, measurement of the, of, of, of the strength of an acid. And so we'll see some of the numbers. You know, the thing uh, you know to remember is lower the pKa, higher the acidity. So lower pKa means very uh, high in acidity or the strong acids like hydroiodic acid, minus 10, hydrobromic, hydrochloric, minus 6, and so on. You know, all these minus means, you know, they are very they are strong acids, you know. Then... The carboxylic acids are around four, or sometimes you know some texts they say about five. So the four, you know, four or five. So then they are not really uh, strong acids compared to the compared to these uh, these mineral acids. And then see uh, the alcohols are like about seventeen pK. You know, higher the pK, so the low acidity. So they are they are low acidic acids. And we know that uh, ketones and aldehyde, the alpha hydrogen, is acidic, and its pK is about 20, 24. They're weak acids. So then uh, there are more uh, pK numbers, and uh, see the hydrocarbons, alkanes, is pK about 50. They're not, they're not, they're really, really low in acidity. But uh, why we, so we, we saw that, you know, alcohols, uh, alcohols are about 17, so their uh, pK is 17, it's really low acidity, but carboxylic acids are about 4. So why carboxylic acids are stronger acids than alcohols? Because alcohols also, you know, has hydrogen, you know, uh, it's ROH. So that, you know, can also be uh, uh, given to water, you know, then release photons, so Acids, you know, definition by definition, acids are the species which could donate protons. So then uh, alcohol, alcohols also have some acidity. Uh, 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 you know, uh, as, as shown here. But the, uh, the difference between alcohols and uh, uh, carboxylic acids, the carboxylic acids have this resonance form, so re resonance stabilization. Uh, this, you know, uh, the carboxylic acid itself, without, you know, without being deprotonated or removal of the proton, these electrons can be shifted to this, uh, between this carbon and oxygen, and you can get this resonance forms. So then, uh, and that there, you know, you have one resonance structure. So then after deprotonation, after deprotonation, when you make the carboxylate uh, anion, so this is the carboxylate the lead anion. So then that also has, you know, resonance structures uh, like this. And that kind of, you know, contributes uh, for the stabilization of the carboxylic acids. Therefore, it is high in acidity compared to the alcohols. So uh, if you uh, draw the, you know, energy diagram for these deprotonation of uh, alcohols to you know, alkoxy anion, alkoxy anion, uh, like this. And if you compare that with the, uh, the deprotonation of the carboxylic acids, you know, from carboxylic acid to the carboxylate. So there'll be, you know, energy difference or, or stabilization because now see this curve, the curve that we get for the carboxylate is lower than the, the, the curve that we get for the, uh, Alcohol or the without resonance stabilization, but due to the large, uh, you know, due to this uh, resonance stabilization, so there's the energy gap. So then, uh, that uh, the energy profile for carboxylic acid will be lower than the alcohol because of this uh, resonance stabilization. 
And, and also this acidity is affected by the substituents on this R group. So we know, because I, I have repeatedly told you this, when you have, when you build a negative charge on the molecule, so you should be able to, there should be a substituents or some effect that should be on the molecule to reduce this negative discharge, you know, this negativity. So this negative can be kind of removed. Uh, so then that will stabilize, so that will make uh, the molecule make more of this negative charge because the negative charge will be taken care of. But if you're getting a positive charge, you need to be able to, uh, you know, push more electron density towards that positive charge to make it stable. So see, the acidic acid, just acidic acid, no substituents, it's pKa 4.76. But see, with only one chlorine substituent, like chlorine added, pKa reduced to 2.86. The lower the pKa, higher the acidity. So it was therefore compared to acidic acid, chloroacidic acid is higher in uh, acidity, so lower pKa, because uh, the chlorine, because when you deprotonate here, you so when you remove this proton, you get negative charge. This negative charge will be stabilized uh, by this chlorine because of this negative I effect or the inductive, negative inductive effect. It, it draws the electron density towards that. So therefore, the formation of negative charge, it's not, it's not a problem. It's, actually, it is promoted because of the presence of chlorine. But if you put a two chlorine, so then this a negative uh, inductive effect will be higher and the pK is even lower. So now, uh, so it's more acidic. So this, this uh, dichloroacidic acid is more acidic compared to acidic acid. But if you put three chlorine, so the more negative inductive effect and the pK is even lower, like 0 0.70. So that's how we know uh, the substituent uh, effect the acidity of these carboxylic acids. And more examples are here like, uh, the same uh, electronegative substituents, but then it, depending on where it is, you know, how far it is from the carboxylic acid, see, so this is kind of far away, therefore pK is higher compared to this because this one is just next to the, uh, just next to the carboxylic acid uh, carbon, so therefore its inductive effect is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's greater than uh, this example where chlorine is kind of far away. And see, look at, you know, from this example to this, pK has gone up, then means acidity uh, decreases because this chlorine is uh, kind of far away from the carboxylic acid. So that, or, you know, that's how, you know, we have to consider about the substituent effect, whether uh, so this acidity is increased in the, uh, because of the, uh, due to the presence of uh, electronegative atoms and their negative inductive effect because of the electron density is kind of withdrawn from the, uh, the formed uh, carboxylate anion. So that's a favorable situation to make that carboxylate anion, and so then that will increase the acidity. Okay, so now we uh, look at the reactions of carboxylic acids uh, and, and their derivatives. And, uh, and we know, as I mentioned before, except the nitrile, all these carboxylic acids and derivatives, they have the acyl group. Acyl group means, you know, this, this uh, the carbonyl, uh, and you know, then you have uh, uh, something here. It could be OH, it could be chloride, it could be amide, it could be an ester. So this acyl group is there. That means you have this carbonyl group, and uh, therefore they show nucleophilic substitution reactions uh, like aldehydes and ketones. So that's what they do. So since we have this carbonyl group, they will show they undergo this nucleophilic substitution reactions as shown here. So the, uh, the basically what happens, you know, it's a two-step reaction. You, the nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon, which is the, uh, the pot positive center. And so then you have negative uh, oxygen, so nucleophile attack, and you get this uh, tetrahedral intermediate, and then followed by the elimination of uh, this uh, Z or the Z, that you had attached to the uh, carbonyl group originally. And so that will be the leaving group. Then you get the uh, nucleophile attached to the, uh, the carbonyl carbon. Okay, so that's, uh, you know, again, uh, the, the two steps uh, that uh, happens, uh, two steps that take place during this nucleophilic uh, addition uh, of these uh, aldehydes or ketones. So this is a ketone. So it's very similar 
situation happening with the carboxylic acids. Uh, so this is just to remind you uh, the uh, the nucleophilic addition and, uh, on aldehydes and ketones that we learned before. So we look at some specific examples uh, of these carboxylic acid reactions. Uh, the uh, very common reaction is esterification. How do you uh, convert a carboxylic acid to an ester? So that is the reaction between carboxylic acid and alcohol. So, and we need, uh, these reactions are promoted by acids. So in the presence of an acid, so you can make, you can convert carboxylic acid uh, to an ester by reacting it with alcohols. Okay, so then, uh, how you know what is the mechanism of this esterification? It's also called Fischer esterification. So there are you know like four steps involved. Uh, so this is kind of you know divided into four steps for us to understand easily. So then you the you start with you know you have the carboxylic acid. You start with as I said you know this is acid catalyzed like HCl, but it doesn't have to be HCl. Uh, many other acids can promote this reaction. So you just need a little bit of uh, protons or acids. So then this carbonyl oxygen gets protonated, uh, you know, abstract a proton from the acid. And now the that oxygen become positive. And, and I, I explained this before as well. So when you have, the, the reason is, you know, this, this, this carbon is not that electrophilic compared to aldehyde and carbon. So when uh, uh, when this oxygen is protonated, now this carbon this carbon right here is more electrophilic, or it can undergo nucleophilic uh, nucleophilic uh, attack very easily. So now the alcohol, so this is our alcohol. Alcohol has this oxygen and has lone pairs or or the electrons that it can donate or electrons that can be used to uh, attack this carbonyl. Carbon, so it will attack this carbon, and these pi electrons will open up onto oxygen, and then this positive charge will be gone. And then now you get this tetrahedral intermediate number one. Now see this since the alcohol donated the electrons, now it has become positive. So then what will happen is you know you that it's not a, a, a favorable situation for oxygen to have a positive charge. Then the base in your solution in the system uh, so or, you know here like when this uh, proton is abstracted uh, by the carbonyl carbon you know like this proton so you're actually generating chloride so that's that's the base so that will act as a base and that base will take this proton you know it'll be abstracted abstracted mean you remove it you remove it from the substrate you take it and that will generate this molecule which is neutral now so the pro this positive charge is gone. So now what happens, you know, you have this uh, OH here, it gets protonated. So it abstract another proton. And now it, after abstracting another proton, so you create this uh, the positive charge in oxygen or you know, this whole thing is like water molecule. Now, what we have essentially done is you have made this OH a good leaving group by converting that to OH2 plus. And we have discussed that in details before. So OH2 plus is a really good living group. So then this oxygen, uh, the lone pair on the oxygen will be donated to, to this carbon and oxygen bond, you know, creating a pi bond, the double bond. And this will, OH2 plus will leave as shown here. And then again, so because of this donation of these electrons of this oxygen to make the double bond, it becomes a positive. And therefore, we need to remove that positive charge. So now the base will come back again to abstract this proton. And then you have, uh, then you get your ester at the end. So that is the mechanism of esterification. It's not really hard, it's very simple. If you remember, you know, these, uh, uh, you know, I think it's more than, I think, uh, not four steps, six steps. Uh, So here's the mechanism given in your book. So I'm not gonna go through this. I just wanted to have it here. It's the same thing, uh, but in my previous slide, so it's kind of divided into six steps for us to understand easily. But it, if you get this, uh, that that's more than enough. So that's uh, all about the 
uh, carboxylic acids or this uh, this session and uh, i will uh, i'm going to stop here now